All right, folks, what we got here is a carburetor out of one of those little Chinese ATVs. This is a 110. The issue that we have is all the fuel is dumping out this bottom spigot. So there's something not right inside this carburetor. Well, that's pretty clean in there. What looks like dog fur. There is some dirt. Let's see if this stuff is sliding right. Oh, wait a minute. I think I see the issue. Yes, I do. Somebody has been in here. This is an easy fix if I have the right part. Okay. This is not supposed to come out like that. The little piece you see dangling underneath is the needle, which just fell off. That's fine. But there is supposed to be a pin that goes through here and holds this in there. And that pin is missing. All right, we're back at the card for the ATV. And uh, we were missing a piece that holds the float in. So what I ended up having to do, I didn't have parts that fit. So I ended up going and buying a carb kit for um, this carburetor. Uh, comes with all of the necessary seals and uh, needles, jets, floats, springs, you name it, it's there. I don't need all these parts. Um, this carb looks pretty good. And I'm going to change a couple things while I'm in there, uh, only because you had to buy the entire kit. So I got to fish out. Okay, so that is the part that we were missing. Whoever took this apart before lost this, probably tipped it on its side, fell over and gone. The floats look to be in pretty good shape. I think we can probably get away with putting those back in there. Don't hear anything in them. Okay. Everything else inside the carburetor looks to be in really, really good shape. It looks brand new. Um, looks can sometimes be deceiving, but we're going to assume that they're probably okay at this point. Just threading the needle on the inside of this uh, float. I'm going to drop the needle down inside the hole. There we go. Grab my piece that was missing. This carb kit, by the way, was not expensive at all. Um, I think I paid $10 for it. Uh, it took about a week to get here. Um, it was in Canada, so it, uh, I didn't have to wait for it to come over from China. Some parts earlier this year, um, I did have to wait some time for those to come in. So that is in. I see a speck of dust down in there. A little compressed air. Get rid of that. That will plug things up in a hurry. Okay. Um, the one other thing I'm going to replace is the seal, which is why I had this outside of the uh, bag, trying to get it to lay flat. Um, it's the seal for the bowl, and although I don't think it was leaking, uh, it's extremely flat and hard. So 
I thought it was just better to replace it rather than put this whole thing back together and find out this seal was leaking. Again, it's extremely flat and dry. Starting to think I should have pulled that thing out and left it overnight. It's only been out for an hour or so. Okay, there is one other O-ring seal on here, but it goes on the intake. Um, it looks to be pretty good. There's definitely still seal there. So I'm going to leave that one alone. I have a spare if I need it. Okay, I just put some fuel in the tank. And we're just looking to see if it's going to leak. The carburetor is actually, it's not fully bolted in yet. But... Sadly, we've got the carburetor back on the bench. It's cool enough to touch now. So I put this all back together. At first it didn't leak fuel, um, but I couldn't get it to run. And uh, for the life of me, I couldn't find the adjustment for um, the air screw adjustment. Partially because one of the screws I was trying to adjust would not move, and that's this one here. Went down in here. So, as you can see, I've really, uh, if you can see it on the video, I've really buggered up the end of this. Um, I was able to get it to turn about an eighth of a turn on the machine. Beyond that, nothing else. So, I elected to take it out so I could get at it better and hopefully be able to turn it. Um, I wasn't able to turn it anymore. So I completely disassembled um, this carburetor down to everything that I could take out of it. Um, I have since replaced these parts as well since I was back in it again and said, well, this is sort of the last straw for this thing. Um, and I had them, so I replaced them. Um, but what I ended up having to do is I ended up having to put some heat on this, uh, which is why I wanted everything taken out of it, dried out. I didn't really want to have a big bonfire in front of me. Um, once I did that, uh, I was able to easily get this out. Uh, and as I was starting to suspect, somebody applied permanent Loctite um, to this. I don't know if you can see it. Most of it's come off. But that's why it was so hard to get out. Um, so thankfully, another one of these came in that rebuild kit that I bought. Um, there was a spring in that as well. That's the little spring. So that's a new one. Pop that in there. I got a new float, so we're going to throw a new float and new needle in it. So like I said, at this point, this is sort of the last straw for this carburetor. Beyond that, they're $25 on Amazon to buy a new one. If this fails, we're buying a whole new one. Maybe what I should have done in the first place, but... It looked as though it only needed one part.
The last thing I noticed when I was taking this back apart again is the intake spacer is missing an o-ring. Now the kit I got only came with one o-ring which would be I assume intended for the o-ring on the carburetor it goes against this spacer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that extra o-ring and I'm going to stick that in the intake spacer. I doubt this was causing me any problems but 